I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I put out laid-back luxury travel videos inspiring you to maybe get on a catamaran for a week in Sicily. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for stopping back by. I really appreciate your support. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my week in Sicily from Palermo out to a few islands and back. I'm gonna introduce you to the cast of characters, everybody that was on the boat, as well as what we did for the week. If you're interested in going on one of the cabin charters like I did, I have left a link in the description below for a discount code. I went with intersailclub.com and they have over 1,500 itineraries across the entire globe. I can't wait to go on another trip. This was the first, but obviously not the last. On my trip with Intersail Club, we went to three out of the five Agati Archipelago Islands. Supposedly, this area is the largest marine preserve in the Mediterranean and throughout Europe. Pretty phenomenal area to visit. As I mentioned, we started in Palermo and then we headed out to Lavanzo, then we went to Maritimo, and then we spent a couple of nights in and around Favignana. So the first thing that we did when we started our trip was we met at a bar near the port and we made a huge grocery list of all of the things that we we're gonna need at least for the first few days as well as the major staples while we were in Palermo. The reason that we did our own shopping is this particular cabin charter did not have a cook. So one of the best things about it was we all got together, decided what food we were going to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we all cooked together and cleaned together, set the table. It made for a really tight-knit community that is, I would say, you wouldn't get on a regular charter where you have a cook and somebody looking after you all of the time. So there were three of us that went to the grocery store to get all of the food. A little bit chaotic. We had one person from England, one person from the US, and one person from Italy. It was quite an experience ordering food for eight people in the boat. Once we made it through the grocery store, we actually came back to the boat and had all of the groceries delivered. It's official, we made it. All the shopping's done, we're here. This is home for a week. Oh, I cannot wait. Once we got here, everybody else was already on the boat. They had made the beds, they had gotten all organized, all of our luggage had been deposited in our cabins, and we had another briefing as to where we thought we were going to be going for the next seven days. But of course, Mother Nature sometimes decides that you're going to change your course and change your path a little bit. So we had a general idea of where we'd be going, but we weren't sure until we got there. Now that we're all on the boat and we're ready to set sail for the first night, let me introduce you to the cast of characters. First, we have Giorgio. He is our Capitano and he is our skipper. He lives in Ibiza, but he's actually from Naples and he is going to be in charge of the boat and us for the entire week. Next, we have our yoga instructor because this was a yoga meditation retreat. Even though some of us were not so yoga-ish, this one included, there were some that were very mindful and others that were a little less mindful. So our yoga instructor, her name is Fulvia and she lives in Palermo. The guests included Georgia and Christina from Italy, one from the north, one from the south, Sophie, who is actually French, living in Rome, Tony from the UK, Sharon, my girlfriend from Atlanta, and me. So we have one Italian, two Italian, three Italians, four Italians, one French living in Italy, one Italian living in France, and then we have one UK, one from Georgia, one from Texas. I think that basically covers everybody. So now that you have the cast of characters, let's set sail. As I mentioned a minute ago, Mother Nature sometimes changes our course for us. 
Our first night was supposed to be in Lavanzo. However, the rain and wind kept us quite close to Palermo. We decided to stay just about 45 minutes from the main port in Palermo, and we stayed at the beach called Mondello. The next morning, we got up and we made a beeline about eight hours all the way to Lavanzo. So once we arrived in Lavanzo, a few of us went for yoga. Again, there were a few of us that were better at practicing than others. The others actually went into town about a 30 minute hike from the cove where we were located and we got ourselves a cocktail and we saw a beautiful, beautiful sunset. So a couple of tips I have for you about organizing a catamaran, things that you want to ask. One, how old is the boat? Number two, how big is the boat? Number three, what is the experience of the captain? Number four, are you going to have a cook or are you going to be cooking on your own? All of these things are extremely important. If you would like to know everything that you need to know before you go on a catamaran trip, make sure to go to my video that explains everything that you have to know before you go. The next morning from the cove, the entire group of us walked into town, which again was about 30 minutes. We had a delicious coffee. We had some pastries. Of course, I'm gluten-free, which makes Italy really hard on me, but I got to watch everybody eat all those delicious pastries. And I had a gorgeous cup of espresso that I cannot tell you. It was so delicious. And then what we did was we had Capitano come over to the port and pick us up, and then we were on our way to our next stop. The best part about this trip is we only had two long days at sea because we decided to stay in the islands a little bit longer. So we had eight hours from Palermo into Levanzo, and then on the way home, we had eight hours from our last stop all the way in. The rest of the time we were literally traveling maybe an hour to two hours at the most. So we got to go to all of these amazing coves and got to go swimming and snorkeling and going to beaches and taking the tinder in. It was the best way to do this. When you are going on a catamaran, I suggest going short distances if you can. So that's also something else that you should ask when you're looking to book a catamaran. So if you're interested in going on a week-long catamaran trip, I have a wonderful free guide that is everything that you have to pack. So all you have to do is go to the description below and click the free guide. So after we left Levanzo again, as I just mentioned, a very short trip to Maritimo, and there we stopped at a beautiful cove that had a castle at the top. The group of girls decided to go up to the castle and play a little bit of Rapunzel. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down. It was a wonderful experience and quite a hike up there after having been on the boat for three days. After we went for a hike up to the castle, we came back for a swim and then we went over to the port of Maritimo for the evening. It was great to check in, refuel, slow down, get a little bit more food as if we needed more food already. Uh, it was also a lot of fun to wander around the port and the town and it was a delicious dinner on land that night. The next morning we got up, went into the port again, had a coffee and a pastry and then we were off to Favignana. Favignana is the largest island in the archipelago and it has the biggest city and I would say the most energy of any of the five islands. We actually spent three nights around Favignana. The first night that we stayed in Favignana, we stayed in one of the coves, Cove Provetto, which Cala Provetto. Second night, we decided to stay in port where we got more fuel, we got fresh water, and of course, guess what? We got a few more groceries. The port of Favignana has great shopping, great restaurants, great coffee, and great gelato. There's a fantastic store there as well called Campania, which also has a gorgeous bar overlooking the tuna factory. They're famous for their tuna factory that is now a museum and no longer a functioning tuna factory. Our last night in Favignana, which was our sixth night, we stayed in Cala Rotonda, which actually has a fun, fun, fun outdoor sunset bar. It's kind of like being in Ibiza or being in Formentera. We were up, we were dancing, and we were drinking Aperol spritzes, had a great time that night. 
We wrapped up our trip with an eight hour boat ride home with a quick stop for a little bit of octopus pasta that was caught by Capitano and cooked by Capitano over at the Isla Feminina or the Women's Island on the way back to Palermo. Our last night was in Palermo. We docked about 5 p.m. We all took showers, which was wonderful. The rest of us went for a long yoga practice while half of us went for a cocktail. We had a wonderful dinner together our last night and the final morning at 9 a.m. in Palermo, we all packed up, got our stuff and got gone. It was such a phenomenal trip. I cannot tell you how much I would recommend doing a cabin charter with Intersail Club. It was a wonderful community. It was so much fun to cook. It was so much fun to have the different cultures, the different people, the different styles of everything. And it was a perfect location to do this in Sicily. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If there is any comments or suggestions you have for taking a catamaran trip, make sure to put them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you on some amazing island on a catamaran very, very soon. Take care. Bye.